For this project, we're going to use an existing scenario. Select Open a Scenario. Go to the Data Federate. Give it a minute. Make sure you're logged in as student. If you're not, the username and password is student. We're then going to browse for our file under Public, Users, Training, and we're looking for Afghan Terrain. Open and let it reconfigure. After we've configured the window, we want to go to the properties of Afghan Terrain and we're going to change a few things. You want to make sure the stop time is 7 hours after the start time, which should be on July 2nd at 1200 hour. You also want to make sure that the epoch time is set to use analysis start time. Once you've done that, click apply, then go to the description page and change the description to can I survey 10 different locations from a UAV. Once you have done that, click apply and go to the global attributes page and change the surface at to mean sea level. Once you have done this, apply and click OK. We will now want to create a new area of interest, but first we will want to toggle off our previous one or delete it. To do this, either uncheck it or right click and select delete. We will then want to create a new one by opening our object browser, selecting area target, area target wizard. Name it hot area. Ensure it is a color that will be viewable. I will be using red and insert four points, both latitude and longitude. Once you have done this, click Apply and OK. You should see your hot area. Go ahead and close out of the objects menu. We will then want to go into the properties menu of our hot area and go to 3D graphics attributes. Turn on show boundary wall and change the upper edge to height from terrain and make it 0.1 kilometers. Once you have done this, click apply and OK. You may have noticed that my terrain is not loaded. If you find this is true for you, you have likely been given a resource folder. This resource folder will contain all the terrains and files that you need for certain projects. Go ahead and click Add Terrain Imagery and locate your files on your computer. Once you have done this, click them and select Open. You should see your terrain is now loaded. Once you have done this, go ahead and zoom in on the hot area. For the next part of this project, you will need Excel as well as the resource file Hotspots. Once you have located the Hotspots Excel file, open it up, copy the contents of A13, and select B2. Type in equals in the FX line and then paste the contents. Click enter. This should what the correct formatted line should look like. Once you have done that, highlight B2 through B11 and select control D. This is what the correct format should look like. Once you have done this, click save. We will now be repeating similar steps for set position. Click on C15 and copy the contents. Then select F2. Type in equals in the FX line 
and paste the contents. Click Enter. This is what the correct format should look like. Select F2 and drag down to F11. Once again, Control D. This is what the proper formatting should look like. Once you have done this, click Save. For the next part of this project, we will be making use of the button tool. To go to the button tool, there should be a shortcut on your desktop. However, if there is not, locate it in your AGI folder on your computer and double click the button tool shortcut. You'll notice you're not connected because the border will be red. To connect, select connect, ensure the socket is 5001 and you're connecting to the local host. If you have connected properly, the border will turn green. Clear the output. Go back to the Excel file and copy the contents of B2 through B11. Right click on the body of button tool and select edit and paste. Repeat the steps you did with B2 through B11 with F2 through F11 and paste them below the new commands. After you've done this, extend the Tools menu and select Command button from Output window. Name the button Create Hotspots. Click Create. You should now see a button called Create Hotspots. Clear the output. Test the button by clicking on it. If you see that your buttons have created commands, then your button is working correctly. Using the same methods as before, we will now fill the contents of model scale and height above ground. Copy the contents of G16. In G2, type equal signs Paste the contents. Click Enter. Once again, highlight G2 through G11 and Control D. Copy the contents of H17. Select H2 and type in equals and paste the contents. Press Enter. Highlight H2 through H11 and Control D. We will now go back to the button tool. We will now use the button tool to create the properties of hotspots. After you have cleared the output of the button tool, copy the contents of G2 through G11. Paste them into the body of the button tool. Do the same thing with the contents of H2 through H11. Once you have done this, go to Tools, Command button from Output window, and name the button Set Hotspot Properties, and click Create. You should now see the button. Clear the output and press the button. We will now want to declutter our labels. To do this, clear the output of our button tool and type in the following command. Click Send. Go back into SDK and look at your labels. They should be elevated. Go back to the Excel file. Either repeat the same steps as before or if your Excel sheets I2 and J2 are already filled out, select I2 through I11 and control D. Same steps with J2 through J11. These are what the commands should look like. Once you have done this, we are going to create another button. But first, clear the output of the button tool. Copy the contents of I2 through I11 and paste them into the button tool. Do this with J2 through J11. 
create another button and name it set az mask. Once you have done this, clear the output and press the button. We will now want to confirm the changes of our button. Go back to SDK and highlight hotspots 1 through 10. Go to their properties window and go to constraints basic. If the mask has been applied, then all your buttons have worked. We will now want to insert an aircraft. Open the object browser, click Aircraft and From Aircraft File. Click Insert. Locate the Predator from your resource folder. Once you have done this, click Open. After you've inserted the Predator, go to its Properties, Constraints Basic. Ensure Min Elevation is minus 90 and Max is minus 50. Once you have done that, click OK. Let's see what the Predator sees. Right click on Predator and click Access. Highlight hotspots 1 through 10 and access the graph. This will give you a very detailed explanation of all the access points of all the hotspots. Once you have finished looking at the graph, close out of it and remove all the access points we just computed. Click Close. Let's animate the Predator. To do this, click Start. If the animation is too fast, you can decrease the time step or increase it. You can also step in reverse or step forward. You can also reset the animation at any time. This concludes our tutorial of STK-10.